video, we're going to identify the main parts of a desktop computer and explain the function of each part. What are the parts of a desktop computer? We have here a monitor. A monitor is a box with a glass display that looks like a television. The computer displays the output of processing on the monitor for us to see. It is also called the computer screen. This part is a keyboard. It is a rectangular tray that has many letters on it. It is used for putting information, including letters, words, and numbers into your computer. This part is a mouse. It has an animal's name. It is usually beside the keyboard. It is a small object that sits on a pad of a plastic or rubber. We input data to a computer using either the keyboard or the mouse. This part is a system unit. This is the metal box about the size of three shoe boxes. If we compare the computer to a human being, the system unit is like the brain. This is where all the data processing takes place. So, these are the parts of a desktop computer. A monitor which displays the output. A keyboard which we use to type letters, words, and numbers. And also a mouse that we use also to input something into the computer. And the system unit which processes the data that we input into the computer. The desktop computer is the most common type of computer. It is the one we usually see in our school, usually in computer laboratory and library. And we usually find desktop computer in computer shop. How does a computer work? A computer can accept data from the user. These are called input. The computer will work on the data we input. It will process the data. The result of the processing we displayed, this is called output. The place where you're going to store the output is called storage. These are the processing cycle of the computer. We have already learned the different ways computers help us. In this section, we will be introduced to the different things that are attached to computers. They help computers become more useful. We will also learn how these things are used. A lot of tasks can be done easier and better with the help of computers. Indeed, computers are used to do work in the office to learn in school, or even just to have fun at home. Computers become more useful with the help of little machines that are attached to them. These are called peripheral devices. Imagine writing a letter in a computer but not being able to print it. Or, you may want to watch a DVD in your computer but cannot hear a sound because there is no speaker. You would definitely like a computer with peripheral devices. There are many peripheral devices. Some of them are used for input or for output. Here are some of the examples. Printer. We use a printer to print copies of letters and reports that we write in the computer. We also use it to print emails and interesting web pages. Some printers can also print very good photos and drawings. Next is a scanner. We scan. We can see photographs and read magazines, but a computer cannot. We use a scanner to input photos and other information from paper into a computer. Once the photo or article is in the computer, we 
can now use it, modify it as we please or simply store it. Next are speakers. Speakers are used so that we can hear the songs or sounds of movies and games. We should be careful to keep the volume low if only one person wants to hear the sounds. Headphones can be used instead of speakers. Next is a microphone. We can record sounds on the computer including our voice using a microphone. Once the sound is recorded, we can use the computer to edit, use it in multimedia applications, or simply play it again and again. Next is a CD or DVD drive. The CD or DVD drive is a device used to play songs in a CD or watch a movie in a VCD or DVD. Some computer games need a compact disc order to run. So, you need to have a CD or DVD drive to play them. The latest optical drive is the Blu-ray or BD drive. Peripheral devices are needed by the computer to do some tasks. They make a computer more useful and fun. We benefit more from the computer if it has peripheral devices. What is storage? Unlike other machines, a computer can accept data from us. It can process the data into information we can use. This information helps us work better. But there are some information that we need again. For example, your teacher returned the work you had submitted. She wants you to correct some mistakes. A computer can remember information we input with the help of a data storage device. A data storage device is a peripheral device that can keep information. Despite its small size, it can keep a lot of data. You can think of it like a shelf. You can put some things inside it, then take them out again when you need them. Why we use storage devices? because it can store data until we are ready to use them again. A data storage device helps us save time and energy. Examples of these data storage devices are We have here the hard disk. The software programs that we used in a computer are stored in a hard disk. The hard disk is usually inside the system unit. It can save a lot of information. It can also store our work, photos, songs, and even videos. Next, we have here the flash drive. When we need to bring our saved data to other places, we can use a flash drive. We can easily bring it around because it is light and small. We normally don't carry a hard disk around because it is very delicate. A flash drive is also called a USB drive or a thumb drive because it is about the size of a human thumb. Next, we have here memory card. A memory card is another data storage device. It is smaller than a flash drive. It is used in digital cameras, mobile phones, laptop computers, and tablets. The last one are optical disc. Optical disc are flat, circular disc used for copying or moving large files. There are three kinds of optical disc used. We have the compact disc or CD, the digital video disc or DVD, and the Blu-ray disc or BD. They look all the same. The BD can store the most data. The CD stores the least data. The BD is the best for sound and video files. CD, DVD, and BD readers are used to read information on optical disc. CD, DVD, and BD writers are used to write information on optical disc. 
Storage devices helps our computer remember information we need. It keeps our data until we are ready to use them again. It helps us save time and energy. Now that we have learned about the many ways that computers help us, we are ready to start using them. But like all other machines, computers must be used correctly so that they will last. They have to be taken care of. In this section, we will learn how to correctly switch the computer on and off. We will also learn some helpful habits when using them. You have seen the many ways how computers help us. But before you can start using the computer, you must first learn how to operate it properly. If it's your first time to use a computer, it's best to ask your parents or teacher to stay beside you and guide you as you follow these steps. Our computers are usually connected to the electric outlet by means of a device called an automatic voltage regulator or AVR. Switch on the AVR to bring power to your computer unit. AVR is usually used if you are using desktop computer. Turn your system unit on. The power switch is usually located in front of the system unit. It is often the largest button that you see. Switch on the monitor so you can watch your computer start. After turning on your system unit and your monitor, your monitor will show a black screen with words and numbers on it. This means that the system unit is starting up. A colored screen with little images will then appear. We call this screen the desktop. The desktop can also have pictures or drawings as its background. We call this background the wallpaper. The little images on the desktop are the icons. Many programs are run by double-clicking their icons. Easy, isn't it? Ooh.